Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, we're going to take a look at Data Spell, the IDE for professional data scientists. Data Spell is a product from the JetBrains family. JetBrains makes amazing IDEs. They are the makers of PyCharm, which is a very capable Python IDE. Data Spell is a product in their line of family. We're going to look at Data Spell today, orient around the capabilities, do a quick overview of the UI and orient where this fits into the modern data space as an IDE for uh, data professionals and data scientists. With that said, let's jump right in into our installation. Uh, a brand new installation of uh, data spell on the desktop. It's a desktop client. Once you launch that, it's going to prompt you for an environment. You can either use an existing environment, you can create a new environment, or you can leverage Anaconda as well. In this case, go ahead with the default and launch uh, data spell it takes a few seconds and the new instance of data spell is being launched now um, once we launch our data spell we're going to be welcome with a screen that looks like this if you've worked with pycharm in any capacity this user interface will look familiar to the left is a workspace to the right is the canvas and around are some other options for access here we're going to come in the very first thing we can do is add the Jupyter connection, create a new project or a new uh, workbook and open existing ones and see our recent files as well. Let's go in and create a brand new directory. So here we're going to attach a directory, give it a name, a uh, data spell, and it's going to put that within our projects. We now have a directory ready for us to use. Now we can come in within this directory, right click on that. There are several options. Again, we can keep attaching directories, create files, refactor, bookmark, and much more. Once we have our directory created, given that data spell is the playground or the IDE for data professionals, especially data scientists, you're going to be working with notebooks type experience. So here we can come in, right click on that, select your interpreter, use the default interpreter or the base interpreter being used. So we're going to keep everything default for now for uh, teams looking to start a new uh, project. This is where you're going to come in, create either a new Jupyter notebook or a Python file. So those are really the options that are available for those that work with Arrow. There's also that option available. Let's create a brand new uh, Jupyter notebook, call this a uh, demo hub and save that. Now we have a brand new Jupyter notebook uh, ready to use. If you've worked with Jupyter notebooks in any capacity, the idea of cells would be very relevant to you. As always, we can come in and print Hello World Demo Hub. Of course, this is a, a notebook. We execute that cell and it's going to execute that and we should see the result on the screen. So that was executed and we can see the result on the screen now. As part of that, if you notice below here, Jupyter server was uh, activated and that Jupyter server is available on this port. So all the notebooks uh, we develop here would also be available on the Jupyter server. So let's go back and paste in that uh, Jupyter server. We should see the same notebook available here. Now, there are some folks that might want to open up this notebook on the Jupyter server and write in here, edit in here. But you can also do that as well. So we can come in and do this demo hub from server, save that. And again, if we run this, we're running this from server. And if we go back in here, we now have this locally also available. So uh, data spell just gives us that interface to edit Jupyter notebooks in the PyCharm type experience, but it still leverages uh, Jupyter server. If you're not familiar with Jupyter server, we've made videos around that. So check that out on the channel to help give you the orientation around our Jupyter server. This is a basic run of the mill notebook here with data spell. Now, if you have a more exciting notebook, because data scientists, you're going to be doing something more exciting than this. You can certainly come in and import that notebook. Here we've imported the sample notebooks uh, from before. We've used these notebooks in uh, other demos. This is a publicly available a notebook. The cells are again all available. You can come in, execute the cells. As before, it's running, leveraging the Jupyter server. Each time we run this, it starts the Jupyter server, and this will be running on the Jupyter server. Markdowns as well also shows up. So if we're going to be editing markdowns, this gives us the options to uh, directly edit that. 
one of the things that's also unique within this is the ability to debug within the notebook type experience. You can come in, hit on debug, and this will give us the option to debug code. And where that comes in handy is, let's say we want to uh, debug and step through the code to this particular point. Now we can put in breakpoints. And as you're working and stepping through your code, uh, it's going to hit this breakpoint uh, here. So it gives that more interactive uh, way of developing and working with uh, your code. So there you have it, a quick overview of a uh, data spell notebook type experience or a Python programming experience for data scientists. This whole space of notebooks is a rich space. Data scientists are always looking for that differentiating capability to fit things into their workflows the way they've always done it. If you're coming from the family of folks who use uh, JetBrains and PyCharm and uh, data spell would naturally fit into what you uh, do already. Now, data spell isn't free. For the products from JetBrains, there is definitely a pricing. Uh, for some people, this could be great. Uh, if you can bundle things up and use, uh, for some, this could be a turn off. We're uh, here with data spell to use it. It's uh, $200 per year per user for the first year. And then the second year, it goes down 10 years. Third year, it goes down uh, significantly. And if you want all the packs or everything within JetBrains, not just data spell, but we're talking about data law, uh, we're talking about PyCharm and some of the other uh, products they have, uh, you can go with the uh, all pack bundle. If you click on learn more here, that's about maybe 800 bucks or so, and it gives you everything. So PyCharm, Go, DM, Data Manager, Data Spell, and a bunch of other IDEs, Rider and AppCode and uh, RubyMine. And for you, this might be overkill, depending on what you're trying to do on your workflow. This might be great, or it might be a, a turn off. So there you have it, uh, Data Spell and options for data scientists to have a notebook type experience to use for their data science uh, work. You can create Python code, or you can create a Jupyter notebook type code, and it runs on a Jupyter server where you can visualize your code, make edits as well. Now, if you're looking for a more collaborative cloud-based option, a data spell wouldn't be what you need. You're going to be looking at uh, data law in that case, and we've made demos around that. So do check the data spell out. If you have questions, let us know in the comment section below. Do you use data spell? Do you have any uh, comments or feedbacks about this tool? Do you recommend it? Let us know in the comment section below so others can benefit from your knowledge. As always, uh, this has been through here with Demo Hub. Thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next demo. Thank <laughs> you.